You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. More Frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. The university near Los Angeles looks peaceful and serene on its oak-studded acres. But in a small office in the physics building, a man is making a long-distance call to New York. A call that could affect the lives of millions of people. Hello? Hello, is that you, Mr. Thurston? That's right, who's that? My name is Bill Wilson. I'm a physics instructor out here at the university. You don't know me, but things are happening out here that... Mr. Thurston, you've got to fly to Los Angeles today. Oh? Suppose you offer some inducements, Wilson, such as why? Have you ever heard of carbon-14? Carbon-14? What about it? Would it mean anything to you if I said that a lot of it has been disappearing out here? Go on, Wilson. Well, I'm afraid to talk freely over the phone, Mr. Thurston, but I can tell you this. The carbon-14... Wilson! What's happened there? Hello, Wilson. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Hello, Wilson. What's wrong? What's happened? Hello, hello. What is it, Ken? Something wrong? Chief, what do you know about carbon-14? Carbon-14? Let's see. A radioactive isotope that... Yeah, uh... that's right. One of the common elements they've been treating with active uranium. Sure, sure. Been using them as tracers, haven't they, to determine the cause of certain diseases? Chief... They might hold the clue to curing cancer, tuberculosis, any number of bacteriological diseases. Well, no wonder they're called miracle workers of science. Yeah. We've only been able to make them for a year or so, and so far their use has been limited to this country. Uh huh. So even small amounts of that stuff could be worth a fortune if sold underground most anywhere in the world. Sure, sure, but what's all this got to do with that phone call? I don't know yet. But from what that guy said before we were disconnected... Maybe I'd better go to the West Coast and find out. Now, wait a minute. You can't go chasing cross-country on the strength of an unfinished phone call from a man you don't even know. <laughs> Nothing but a wild goose chase. Chief, when you chase wild geese, the geese usually get shot, not the hunters. I'm flying out to L.A. I beg your pardon, sir. My cigarette. Uh, could you be kind enough to furnish me with a light? Light? Sure. Yeah, here you are. Ah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Here. No, that's okay. You can keep me. Excuse me. I, uh, I noticed, sir, that you just arrived here in Los Angeles on that flight from New York. You have been so kind. I'm lost without my tobacco. I... I thought perhaps I might reciprocate. Oh, forget it, Mr. Excuse me. Uh, right? Perhaps you do not have transportation. This airport, you know, is quite some miles away from things. I have my car. Perhaps I could assist you. No, that won't be necessary. Thanks for the But I right? am driving out toward the university. The university? Yes. If by any chance you were going in that direction, we might have a very pleasant trip together. What makes you think I'm going in that direction? Why, nothing, sir, but if you are, it would cost me no inconvenience, I assure you. I would be more... From New York, flight 7, report to the dispatcher's office at once, please. Yeah, thanks for your offer, but I'm, uh, I'm making other arrangements. Maybe I'll see you around sometime. Yes. Yes, perhaps you shall, Mr. Thurston. My name's Ken Thurston. I believe you were paging me. Oh, oh yes, sir. This Vanieri wishes to speak with you. 
What, young lady? How do you oh. do, Mr. Thurston? Well... I'm Carla Rayner. I must apologize for having you paged in this fashion, but I did not wish that foreign man to see me talking with you. Oh? Why not, Miss Rayner? It was at Dr. Sherwood's request. Dr. Sherwood? Yes, he is head of the nuclear research department. At the university, I'm his assistant, and he sent me to meet you. It's mighty a nice one, but I still don't... You did don't... not want any of the staff to know that you are arriving, Mr. Thurston. The foreign man is Professor Udow of the department. Udow, I see. My car is waiting outside, Mr. Thurston. Shall we go? No, Miss Rayner, I don't think so. Really? Is there some reason why you do not wish to go with me? A very simple reason. I didn't tell anyone, including Dr. Sherwood, that I was coming to Los Angeles. Goodbye, Miss Rayner. Pagan Zellschmidt. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Welcome to sunny California. <sighs> Hop into my jalopsy and I'll take you right there. Take me right where, Pagan? The university. <laughs> where else? See, Mr. Thurston, I was temporarily embarrassed for fun. No. Yes. And this Bill Wilson offered me a job getting acquainted with this Professor Udall. Udall? Why was Wilson interested in him, Pagan? He didn't tell me, only that I should really case the guy. You understand. How'd you make out? <laughs> I didn't even get the third base. Now, who can understand that man's such a terrible accent he's got? So, so I told Mr. <laughs> Wilson to call you, and all I want is a small commission for getting you the job. Yeah. Thanks. How come you knew when I was arriving? Oh, oh, Dad, I was keeping with Miss Brooks over the long-distance telephone. She told me about your reservations, accidentally, of course. Oh, sure. And you told everyone in earshot, pig on I order... Da, da, da. Look, 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 Mr. Thurston, there's the nucleus building of the university. Must be something plenty important going on there, eh? Could be important enough to cure millions of people who are dying unnecessarily. Gee, Mr. X. Yeah, you better pull over and let that ambulance get past before it runs us down. <laughs> Smart guy. Thinks just because he's got a tin whistle that he can... Hey, look! He's going right to the nucleus building. Yeah. Someone must be hurt in there. Keep going. But I thought you said the stuff in there cured people. You can cure them, Pagan, or kill them. Step on it. welcome you to my office under such circumstances, Mr. Thurston. But one of our workers carelessly exposed himself to radiation from some isotopes. Even a tiny speck of those radioactive elements can prove deadly, you know. So I understand, Dr. Sherwood. Bill Wilson was telling me about him. Bill Wilson? Then you knew him? Knew him? Sounds like he's dead. Well, frankly, Mr. Thurston, he may be. Wilson has supplied the university with a mystery worthy of Sherlock Holmes. What's the story? Yesterday morning, Carla Rayner, my assistant, thought she heard shots from Wilson's office, but when she entered, it was empty. Uh -huh. Her window was open, there was a blood stain on the floor, and Wilson was gone. He's been missing ever since. Uh, you seem to be missing a number of things around here, Doctor. Wilson, isotopes. Isotopes? We're missing no isotopes. Where did you ever get that idea? I don't know, Doctor. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. Is it... Thurston! You hear that? Somebody's trigger happy out there. Let's get going. The ambulance. Well, look, Thurston, that's... Well, that's... Dr. Sherwood. Dr. Sherwood. What is it, Carla? What's happened out here? Those men in the ambulance. They were fakes. What's that? They have located the storeroom. They have taken the isotopes. Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth. Good Lord. Well, looks like you'll have to change your story now, Doctor. Yes. And I'll have to change my story about Bill Wilson, too. Wilson, what do you mean? He isn't missing any longer, Thurston. He was driving that ambulance.
now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. In the Nuclear Research Laboratory of a university near Los Angeles, radioactive isotopes are being used, precious new tools of science. But shortly after Ken's arrival, the isotope storeroom is looted by an ambulance crew, apparently led by the missing physics instructor Bill Wilson. It's now an hour later. A steady rain is falling as Ken and Pagan stand in the night darkened shadows in front of an apartment door. Nobody's home with Mr. Wilson, see? I didn't expect anyone to be. So? You didn't? Uh, then why did we come here in the first place? To see what a dead man who drives an ambulance can tell us about missing isotopes. Huh? Hey. Hey, the door was open. Yeah. Go in. Look at this joint, Mr. Thurston. Boy, what a mess. Scrambled up like eggs, eh? Yeah. If there was anything to find here, somebody's beaten us to it. Yeah, Relax, you idiot. It's under the telephone. But who'd be calling us here? You just said it. Hello? Bill, thank heavens I found you. I've been searching for you everywhere. Listen to me, Bill. I have that number that you asked me to check on. It is NC26X13. Have you got it? NC26X13. Yeah, I have it, Carla. Thanks. You are welcome, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> Short conversation, eh, Mr. Ellis? Well, that was long enough, Peg, on for now. I'll continue it in person. You mean you're going to this Carla Reiner's house? Who's that? Uh, you realize, of course, it's running, uh, raining very hard at that. She lives way out in Coldwater Canyon. Yeah. Mm, sure, so you need a car to get out there, and by a strange coincidence, because we drove it up here, my car's outside, so for a slight consideration, of course, I shall be very happy. Hey, I wouldn't think of troubling you. There's a cab stand at the corner. Good night. But, but, Mr. Thurston! <laughs> How do you like that? After all he's done for me all these years, I get the brush off, huh? All right. Well, maybe he don't appreciate me, but there's other people. Yeah, I'll show him a couple of things or two. Hello? This is Pagan. Pagan Zelchman. Yeah. I got news for you. Mr. Thurston's on his way to Carla Reiner's house. That's right. Huh? Oh, don't worry about the thing. I'll stick to him like a bleach for my usual consideration, of course. Come in, Mr. Thurston. Thanks, Carla. Nasty night out, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. I noticed your car is parked outside. You going somewhere? I dislike talking at cross purposes, Mr. Thurston. What is on your mind? Radioactive isotopes and Bill Wilson. I have nothing to tell you about either. Too bad. I have a couple of theories I'd like your advice on. Theories? Yes. Bill Wilson could have called me in New York and faked a couple of shots to alibi himself. So he could disappear and not be connected with the stolen isotopes, huh? And what has this to do with me? That's my second theory. You could be working with him and helping him hide out. What do you think of him, Carla? You do not have to answer that, Carla. Well, Professor Udall. That is correct, Thurston. And if you wish any more answers, perhaps this gun can speak for both of us. I'll rest my case for a while, Udall. Very sensible. Carla, my dear, we have work to do at the research building. Dr. Sherwood wishes us to start preparing new isotopes at once. It will give us another opportunity for action. How about including me in your plans, Udow? Ah, but you are included, my dear Thurston. Like you this. Uh... Wake up. Wake up, Mr. Thurston. Please wake up. Oh, it's all my fault. Mr. Thurston. Oh, she's dead. If I hadn't told her that he was coming here. Speak to me, Mr. X, please speak to me. Say something, anything. I ought to wring your neck. Oh, Mr. X, you're not dead after all. Not even subconscious. I heard you sneak in here after Carla left me with Uda, and I gave you a chance to hang yourself. Who was it you tipped off about me? I'd be very happy to tell you, Mr. Thurston. Uh, only I don't know. Pagan? I swear by the father of my father, Mr. Thurston. I, I just called the number Mr. Wilson gave me, and somebody answers. The next morning, there's cash in my mailbox. That's all. That number you call isn't NC226X13, two, two, now, is it? Huh? NC what? All right, skip it. Let's get out oh. of here. Hey, you're going the wrong way, Mr. Thurston. I didn't park in the garage. Nor did Connor. 
That's why I want to look in there. Here, let's look inside. Plenty dark in here, Mr. Thurston. Can't see a thing. Should be a light switch. Yeah. Well. Mr. Rex, there's an ambulance in here. The ambulance, Pagan. Huh? You mean the one that robbed the Atom building? Yeah, let's look inside. Nothing mm. in it. Nothing in it. Look, it's empty. Mm. Whoever pulled this job moved the isotopes out of here fast. Mm, that cutie Carla, that's the one. Did she, Pagan? <sighs> look forward into the driver's seat. Driver's seat? What can be... Hey, <gasps> Mr. Rex, it's, it's Bill Wilson. And this time there's no doubt about it. He's really dead. Mr. Thurston, please, won't you tell me, what are we doing here at this airport in the middle of the night? Looking for a DC-3, Pagan. Huh? A twin-engine transport job. Huh? This one. What's the difference between that one and, and the other airplane? The number on the wing. The number on the... Hey, it's NC-26613. That's the number that cutie Carly gave you over the phone. Yes, those license letters, NC with the tip-off. They told me what the number meant. So that's why you were calling all these airplane fields from the hotel, eh? Right. And now we've found it, let's get aboard. Hey, what if somebody sees us? Never mind that, come on. Now let's go back and look at the cargo compartment. Yikes, it's as dark in here like my Uncle Ahmed's soul. Oh, that flashlight helps. Yeah. There's the reason we came aboard. You mean all those little boxes? Little boxes. Those things are full of radioactive isotopes. Oh. But why isn't somebody here to guard them? That would attract too much attention. Oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> but what are they doing here? Waiting for somebody to fly them out of the country. They are, but why should anyone want to do that? Because somebody wants a few million dollars. He doesn't care how many lives it might cost. A few million? Oh, Mr. Thurston. Not that I want to sound monetary, you understand, but why don't we latch on this radium things and scram to Mexico ourselves? Quiet. Somebody's coming aboard. Yeah, so what? We could split with them. Maybe I'll, I'll make a deal with them. And get paid off like Bill Wilson. Bill Wilson. Oh, oh, no. Mr. Thurston, you turned off the flash. It's coming this way. Eh? Oh, it's coming in this hold. Hello, Carla. Oh, what are you doing here? Checking up on some missing isotopes. And a theory. I see. And now you think you have proved it. I've proved still another one, Carla. Wilson got scared when somebody fired at him in his office and he hid out. You were trying to help Wilson get to the bottom of this mess, huh? Oh, yes, that's right, Ken. Only he didn't tell me yeah, any... but the person you suspected found Wilson's hideout before you did. The results in your garage. Yes, Ken, yes, that is the real answer. They had given me a lead on a license number of a plane, this one. That's why I came out here tonight to see if we... Mr. Rex, somebody's at the wheel. We're going to take off. I thought it was about time. Let's go up forward. Sorry, Doctor, there'll be no takeoff tonight. Why, Thurston... Yeah, let's cut these switches. You're not going anywhere. Well, I... I hope you have an explanation for this, Thurston. Sherwood, you're the one who's going to need explanations about the isotopes aboard this plane. Are you crazy? Wilson's the one you're looking for. Or Professor Udow. It won't wash, Sherwood. Wilson's dead. Well, your men parked him to cover up for you. And Udow was helping Connor. But he knocked you out, Mr. Rex. Ah, it was only because he wasn't sure of me and wanted to play it safe. Look out, Ken. He's got a gun. Let's have it, Sherwood. No, no, you're not taking me. I... I'll kill you first. Those isotopes are mine, I tell you. They belong to me. They belong to me. The gun, drop it. No, I... That's better. I said it was all over, Sherwood. Well... Mr. X, listen. Another ambulance. Not this time, Pagan. It's the police. Sherwood, you made a bum choice when you decided to use nuclear science for your own profit. Because there can't be a choice these days. Just like those isotopes. It's kill or cure. And believe me, there's something we'd all better remember. All of us. (laughs) 
Now, Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And I'd like you to know that Carla tonight was played by Kathy Lewis. Next week, our story is called One Way to Macassar. And it's one I don't think you'll want to miss because it's packed full of excitement and mystery. As usual, Leon Belasco will be along in the role of Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Richard Ayer's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. And any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.